Hey, this is Pat from Grinspoon, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, the Easy Detention Tour that's coming at you in October and November of this year. And uh, looking forward to having a chat with Heavy Radio and Heavy Mag. How are you going? Um, good, thanks, Pat. And yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Good to hear, mate. Good to hear. So, Grinspoon have announced a massive national tour for later this year, starting on the Gold Coast on October 29th before heading to Hobart, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Sydney, Newcastle, and finishing in Perth on November 24th. So, been a while between drinks, mate. Be itching to get back out there. Yeah, definitely. We did the um, Spring Loaded Tour, which was last year, which kind of, which, which is a three-year tour. It was 12 dates um, in between COVID and everything else that kind of happened. Um, so, but as far as club shows go or our own dates, it's been a long time. I think the Chemical Hearts Tour, which was 2021, possibly end of 2021, I think we went out on that one. So, yeah, it has been quite a long time. Um, once again, we're kind of doing a retrospective of, you know, Easy, uh, which was our second album, the um, much loved by fans, but not so much by critics, <laughs> and then New yeah. Detention, which was our obviously our biggest selling record and was kind of our crossover into more commercial radio after coming from the Triple J scene of the 90s, as it were. Very cool. And you're also called it the Easy Detention National Tour to celebrate the release of both of those albums on vinyl for the first time ever on September 8th. So that's another pretty exciting chapter. It is. It's amazing that it takes 20 years to release a record on, <laughs> on vinyl these days. Who would have thought? <laughs> For a band like us, it's pretty pathetic. Um, yeah, well, Easy, it's funny, Easy was recorded the old-fashioned way, two-inch tape, you know, straight in, straight from the desk into that. And so it actually trans transposed onto vinyl very well. It's kind of what it was made for. And we really set that album up to have an A-side a and a B-side. Yeah. Um, vinyl sounds amazing. New Detention, which was the first ever record we, we recorded with Pro Tools. Um, took a bit of work to getting there, but it's sounding great. Me and Phil had a bit of a listening session in a hotel in Sydney a couple of weeks ago where we kind of went through both records, talked about the songs, had a real deep dive into the sound, and um, really happy. All the secret tracks turned up, um, not in the same places that they were. I think on Easy. The secret track was six, six minutes and 66 seconds after the last track. Wow. It comes straight in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we're made. Geniuses we were back then. Innovative. And then, uh, but it comes straight <laughs> it comes straight in now. Um, so, yeah, you get a bit of extra stuff on the vinyl as well. And obviously the gatefolds are really great. The artwork is the original artwork from New Detention. And, um, yeah, the easy one's great. There's, I think there's a giant used ashtray as the centerfold. So <laughs> <laughs> just to get everyone into that 90s feeling, you know. Oh, very good. Does that mean you're just going to play songs off those two albums on the tour, or are you still going to play the hits? Um, well, I think that there's a lot of hits on New Detention, and there's got there's a few on 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 um on Easy as well. I mean, New Detention had five singles plus other B sides that we still play live. I think to squeeze ninety minutes in, I think we'll probably do seventy five minutes of those albums, which will be pretty good. And then if we're coaxed back on stage for an encore, <laughs> which may or may not happen, we'll probably, um, yeah, hit it and not quit it. <laughs> so let's run through those albums individually, mate, starting with Easy. So Phil has said that it's probably his favourite Grinspoon album. So where does it sit with you? Uh, listen, I, I really like it. I think it was, unfortunately... It wasn't well re that well received with the public. Like our hardcore fans really liked it, but it, we were experimenting a lot more than we did on obviously on Guide to Better Living, which was a you know Guide to Better Living was not expected to do as well as what it did. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of pressure for Easy. Um, that's why we called it Easy because oh, right we yeah. had a <laughs> true <laughs> true story. Um, but in fact, it wasn't that easy. So. There's a lot of art, I guess, on, on Easy, more than just kind of ball, you know, meat and potatoes, rock and roll. Um, a lot of those songs we've never played live before from Easy because they were quite intricate. Um, with Jonathan Burnside produced it, and he's well known. I mean, he did the Sleepy Jackson. You know, he's well known for those kind of intricate orchestrally, you know, lots of parts. Um, and he brought that to that record. And I can see why Phil absolutely loves it because it is a great record, and he contributed a lot. To that record and um but yeah i think that um it's probably his favorite record probably for those reasons but for those same reasons 
it didn't get a lot of it it didn't we didn't drop a lot of singles off it and we didn't tour very extensively off it either you know what i mean yeah. but then when it came to new detention which was the album after i mean that was our biggest selling record yeah. as i was saying before you know you had the chemical hearts the lost controls all those kind of songs that have become part of the Grinspoon vernacular now and we wouldn't be able to get away with doing a show without playing half that record mate Hell oh my no. god the dog is hey, sorry i said i've only known he going away is he Got some last bit of loving in. <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not really. If, if the boss gets to see him do that, he'll be in big trouble. So. <laughs> so back then, when you made easy, mate, like it would have been easy and probably safer to follow the same formula on that album as you did on Guide to Better Living because it was so popular. Like, was it tempting to do that, or did you make a deliberate? Switch oh, away? mate, we we should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me <laughs> lucky with that our third album actually came through um i'm a big believer like that you know if you do something successful once have another crack at it before you go off into another tangent um where we you know you we were we were young men back then um we just kind of thought that we had the world at our feet really we just come back we got signed obviously to universal in the u.s we were full of ourselves we thought we could probably do whatever we wanted and we did um unfortunately it wasn't as successful as what uh, you know, the, the powers that be were hoping that it was going to be. But it really didn't stop us, you know what I mean? I think you, 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 learn, you learn from your, not a mistake, but you learn from your experiences, you know? And uh, I think we took that experience into a, into our next record. Yeah. And that next record, of course, was New Detention, which came out in 2002. Like, as you said before, it was a little bit more commercial and accessible, which prompted a bit of a stir from long-term fans of the band, but... How, how did you react at the time to the fans sort of having a bit of a go at you? Like, was it a case of come for the ride with us or fuck off? Or Yeah, come for the ride with us. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we got the same producer <laughs> that did Guide to Better Living. And that was a, that was a, a you know, a calculated move. We went back to Phil McKellar because he'd, we'd had so much sex, success with him the first time. Um, I think the material, I mean, we only had Kevin I mean, it's a, it's a, a many told story, like, we had the album in the can and then Peter Billing, who was our A&R director at Universal, came to me and Phil. Phil and I were the only guys living in Sydney at the time and said, you, you, you're missing, you're short some songs. So Phil and I went into Stage Door in Alexandria, uh, smoked a bucket load of weed and then wrote Chemical Heart, <laughs> Lost Control and one other one that I... Um, that I that I that, that slips my mind at the moment. You know what I mean. So it was kind of like we had all those kind of heavy songs like "Make It Happen" and you know, there's some there's some heavy tracks on that record. A thousand Miles is but, my favorite song that's on that record. Yeah, like, Thousand Miles. That's one of your exactly. bangers, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, a live favorite. We never do a gig without it. And um, so Chemical Heart was really the one that kind of we were thinking third single, but our management at the time, who's still our manager now. Uh, Greg Donovan was like, let's just try something totally different. Come out with a ballad, in inverted commas, and see if we can get crossover to the Two Day FM commercial radios and try and sell a few more albums that we did of Easy. Um, and, you know, uh, fortunately for him, <laughs> it was a plan that worked. So he kept his job for the next 20 years. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, it's a funny time. I, I, I think we're, we're pretty wrapped up in the fact we we're pretty happy with ourselves you know at the time we thought that we we were down on confidence after easy and and we we're pretty happy with with what we've been able to achieve with new detention and um yeah i think that if people were hating on it then um that was their prerogative to do that you know what i mean but uh it didn't it definitely gained us more fans than lost fans i think at the end of the day and as you say, man, like there is a nice spread of slower songs like Your Chemical Heart and No Reason to some extent with your bangers like Lost Control and Thousand Miles. Like, was all the band on the same page then? Like with going with a bit of a softer direction or did some of you just want to keep going down that like funky sort of hard rock sort of avenue? Jo Joe, our bass player, still wants to only play um, Pennywise-esque fast, <laughs> hardcore Guide to Better Living songs. Um, I think m I probably mellowed a bit. I mean, I wrote Chemical Heart. I mean, the riffs and, and, and the parts of the melody and the lyrics and stuff with Phil, obviously. Um, and that was a concerted effort by me to kind of to try and evolve a little bit. Um, so everyone does things a little bit differently in the band. Um, Joe loves his hardcore, you know. Phil likes his pop, like the No Reasons. 
I like my dad rock to a certain extent on some of that stuff. But then I still love, you know, I still love rock and hard, man. So, yeah. Yeah. So what we're talking about, like old albums and going down down memory lane, I guess, it's the right time to ask you this, mate. But, like, Brent Spoon formed back in 1995, man. So what was the musical climate like in Australia back then that gave birth to the band? And where did you fit in initially? Um, I don't know, really. I mean, we're big fans of Magic Dirt. I don't know if you remember our single which was Sick Fest, which won us the Triple J on Earth contest. Yeah. Um, that five beat, five, four beat, we kind of lifted directly from Ice by Magic Dirt, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah, we were, you know, the, the duck, 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 it's pretty much the same. They've never even mentioned it to us. Maybe they've never listened to, <laughs> maybe they've never listened to the song. They haven't worked it out yet. Um, and I think we were into Regurgitator, you know? We were into that Brisbane scene because we are from Lismore, like Pangaea, Regurgitator, you know, Powderfinger's first album, you know, that had tail on it with all those wacky uh, beats Arabelle's before they went before they went full dad rock, you know? Or the Australian Eagle show as we like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They used to call us Diet Pantera. So we're fair enough. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> So that's kind of where we were birthed from, man. Is that a good enough explanation? Mate, that's probably the best you could have done, mate. Like, it's just laid the whole, the whole landscape <laughs> clear. <laughs> oh, shit. So, despite Grinspeed not being a regular touring band anymore, like, your popularity still remains massive, mate. Like, what, what do you put that down to? Like, these days, people have got short attention spans, you know, and, like, if they're not seeing it all the time, they're just not happy. But you guys come and go as you please, and, and nobody seems... I I, I think the fact that we don't play too much uh, works in our favour. You know what I mean? I think that Phil's got his solo career. Um, I've got other musical, uh, you know, uh, things that I do. Um, you know, both Joe and Chris have, uh, you know, they've, they've got older kids. They're getting on with their lives in a different way. They still love the band, but they're happy not to be still slogging it out, playing smaller and smaller venues. You know what I mean? We want to come out and put on a big show whenever we come out, have the lights, have the, have the pyro, have the really good production, make people, you know, give people value for their money when they come out and see us. So if we don't play too often, it becomes a special occasion. And then if it's becoming a special occasion, then we can put on the best show that we possibly can without having to dilute it into smaller venues, playing more shows. Yeah. I think, I think it was a clever move. I mean, it was more of our management that really decided that that's kind of the path we should go down in this point in time in our career sure we haven't released any music for 10 years but that might change and i think if we do or when we do release new music we'll probably go back and do club shows and then save the more nostalgia stuff for tours like this you know what i mean so that's interesting that you mentioned that like you hadn't done any music for 10 years and you might do more does, does that mean you've been doing a bit of writing or is it just still in the we uh, we have a we have a very rock and roll Dropbox man that everyone puts tunes in every time that they come up with something that they think might be good for the band, and it's looking pretty healthy. So um, it would just be a matter of getting all this kind of stuff out of the way, and then we've talked. We obviously talk about it because we feel like I don't know how much of an appetite there is for new Grinspoon music out there by the general public or even our fans, you know. Massive. But I reckon it would be massive, bro. Well, that's good to hear. Um, see, we don't know, yeah, but um. I think we're kind of get, getting to the point now we'd like to do something even just for ourselves to record some of this music we've had kind of locked away for a, for a long time and, and see if any of it can come to light. So that's definitely on our radar. Um, obviously, we've got to get... We want to do this tour. We're excited about this tour. But after... And I mean, it's only a month and a half. And after that, 2024, uh, the slate's pretty clear for everyone, I think, that year. And um, hopefully we can get in the studio and... and and hopefully people dig what we can come up with. Fuck yeah, that'd be awesome, bro. Like, what, what sort of direction is the, the music in the Dropbox station? Is it a bit of everything at the moment? Or? Yeah, like exactly what I said. There's some hardcore Pennywise style rock and roll, like punk rock. Um, there's lots of dad rock bro, that comes from me. There's pop that comes from Phil. And, you know, Christian kind of writes the occasional death metal, hip hop a la body count kind of a tune that he throws in there. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. All right, Pat. Well, thanks very much for your time today, mate. Brent Spoon yep. are out on tour on the road for the easy detention in October and November. So where can people get tickets and find out more, bro? 
So tickets via Mosh Ticks or, or your local venue, and um, hopefully we can uh, sell these shows through and add a couple more onto the capital cities like Sydney and Brisbane. But um, yeah, or go to our website, grinspoon.com.au or grinspoon.com. Both of them will work, and um, you get all your information there. Beautiful, Pat. Well, enjoy a little holiday that you got on, mate, and cut back ready to rock. We'll catch up with you for a beer in Brisbane. Thanks, brother. I appreciate your time today, mate.